Dear Diary, I notice we put more emphasis on our homes and spend less and less time in them. I just came back from a neighborhood full of lovely houses. In the middle of the day, they were all empty. They were like vessels to hold the life you want, but have no time to have. So when you listen to the sound of, ho of hooking a mat, you listen to that thrumming sound. It really is a soft, rhythmic sound. And sometimes I just like to have no music on in the studio or no one talking. And I just like to come up here. And when I hear that sound, and I'm sort of getting into the motion of the mat, and it sort of gets to almost be a little meditation. All right, so I put that hook down through the burlap or the linen. I'm working on linen right now. And then I lift it up, loop by loop by loop. I love that loop by loop by loop. And I'm just lifting it up and you can see when I pull the one, it pulls the last one back a little bit sometimes and that's perfectly okay. Your loops don't have to be perfectly even. You just want to make sure that you cover the surface of your mat a little bit. So I hold my hook sort of at a, probably looks to me like a 45 degree angle and my hand is working, my hand, my hand underneath is holding the wool and sort of feeding it along. So my hand underneath is moving along with my top hand. And that's how you hook. Just want to make sure that you get the whole area covered without hooking it so tightly. So I'm probably hooking in every second or every third hole. I like to hook randomly in, a, in sort of a loose and free moving way. Now some people like to hook with just one kind of fabric. I'm not one of those people. I like to hook with a lot of different kinds of fabrics. I like using fancy yarns, silk, silk yarns, mohair, natural fleece. I like to use whatever I see that's beautiful and that inspires me. And that's what gets me so excited. When I look at, you know, that beautiful orange and rust yarn, I think, oh my goodness, what you know, what can I do with this? It's fire, it's it's fire, it's fall, it's just 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 plain beautiful and, and I keep seeing all kinds of all kinds of different things. I like to hang it in my studio, I like to leave it around there, I like to look at it, admire it, I like to play with it, I like to touch it, feel it. Sometimes I just take it and rub it up against my cheek. I mean it's a beautiful thing, right? So I like to use um, whatever I can get my hands on. I love recycled fabric. So whenever I can, I, I try to use old skirts and old coats. And I love it when someone drops off a bag at my door of old clothes that they've, that they've had for years. And, and when you use those kinds of textures in your mat, that's, that's what gives the mat some drama. That's what makes it interesting. That's what makes pe make people look at it and say, what's that? What's going on there? You know, it's the, it's the beauty in the mat. The texture to me is the beauty in the mat. Dear Diary, you cannot really make art without telling lies because the way you see it is not always the truth. It's nothing more than your truth, the truth you know and understand, the expression that you are feeding the wor world. It is both lies and truths. Artists create culture. Artists reflect the culture. Artists portray the culture with the brush of their own experience and send it out to be understood by people of different experience. Just create sort of a wash that unites the two. I want my work to be understood from one's own perspective, from the places that the person looking at it understands and loves, from the people they knew, who I know does not matter. I want them to create beautiful lies in the forms of stories that charm them. I want the people who look at the rugs to see their own lives. You know, for me, art, I didn't set out to be an artist. Like, I just, uh, you know, I just, ha I just became an artist. And I became an artist because I was interested in making mats. And I was interested in myself and the way I thought about things. 
and I was interested in expressing that, right? It takes a lot of courage to sort of just think that what you have to say is important enough to, to say it sometimes in, in a rug or, or however, however way you make art. But you can't help yourself. You just do it because you have to do it. You're possessed in, in a kind of a way with the desire to do it. This woman from Tatamagush, Marion Kennedy, and another woman from Truro, Doreen Wright, um, showed me how to make mats. And I never, I, as soon as I did it, it was interesting. I talked to a potter once who said that as soon as she threw a pot, she knew that she had connected with something. And as soon as I was hooking that mat, I knew, right? Like I just kind of knew that this was something that was right for me. Dear Diary, Today on my walk I was looking at a field. A man across the street said hello to me and startled me. I was lost in the color and the movement that the wind was creating. Of course, with the wind lifting and shifting the leaves and branches, the colors kept changing. I had never thought much about how the wind affects color. It was a gray light, but the wind made it appear as if there was someone dancing underneath the bushes, shifting small bits of light around. Well, the thing is, you start off with an image in your head, right? And really, most most of us know that that image in your head is what you're going from. But you never can really achieve it, right? You can never make it as beautiful as you want to, except for once in a while, it's more beautiful than you thought, when you thought it would be, right? And that's the really exciting thing. That's what makes artists keep wanting to make art, right? Because it's sort of like it ends up then you think, I, I really didn't have anything to do with it. It just sort of comes through you, right? It's the spirit. It's your spirit coming out and becoming something tactile, something real, a mat, a rug. So that's, I mean, every once in a while that happens. I mean, that doesn't happen to every mat, obviously, but if it did, I don't know what, what I'd be like. I'd be crazy. <laughs> so, but I'd be crazy and deliriously happy. But anyway, Dear Diary, Everything I do is by hand. I am happy to do it, to be able to do it, and to have it provide for me. It is grace itself, and I am grateful for it. I like being involved in every word that appears here, every pattern that we create, every bit of wool that hangs in the studio. I can't control it all, all of the time, but I like knowing about it and being part of it all. Dear Diary, we all know that time passes. Once, as I watched Katherine Hepburn on a fuzzy little black and white TV, she told me, happiness, kid, is wanting what you have. I've never forgotten it, but at the same time, I have a hard time remembering it. Ironic, isn't it? We look everywhere for it, yet the only place we can find happiness or creativity or love or any of the important things in life is right on our own front stoop, right within ourselves. There is no sense searching too hard for it. You have to find it where you are at with the tools you have. We are lucky, all of us. We have something to lose ourselves in. We have found the art and the craft of hooking rugs. Enjoy your rug hooking. Own your own hands and don't let others tell you how to use them. When you make your rugs, do what feels right to you. Be courageous. It's easier than you think. People understand and respect it. When I hear that sound and I know that I'm able to sit here and make this, I almost know that everything's going to be all right, right, no matter what you're doing. And that's a really beautiful thing, right, to be able to comfort yourself.